Hi everyone, this is Clara with Card Stampin' with Clara. Hope you're doing well today, this Saturday morning. Uh, I'm running a little bit behind, but uh, we'll get the video done here and up shortly. Um, I wanted to uh, make some more Christmas cards with you today, so I hope that'll be helpful. If you would, please push the subscribe button for me. I'd appreciate that. That helps me and it lets you know when I have videos. So it works for both of us, hopefully. And um, today we're going to be using materials that we've used over the past few weeks and see if we can make take our paper and make some uh, different Christmas cards with some of the pieces maybe that are left over. So I hope that will be helpful to you. The card I'm going to make today is this very simple little Merry Christmas and um, it's done in real red and on the inside it says wishing your family health and happiness throughout the home of the coming year so it's uh, easy to make you may very well have all the supplies or close to it so uh, that's kind of the goal this week is to use things we've got so um, what I'm going to use for the um, sentiments came from this for unto us, this this pretty little Merry Christmas right here. It's got lots of beautiful um, Christian sentiments and a, a few that aren't. This is just a plain old Merry Christmas. So I used it on all the cards if I put one on the outside. And then on the inside, I put wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. And that came from the Happy Holly Days um, stamp set. Both of these we've used in the past. And today, I pulled out my old faithful uh, layering squares. They're just like the layering circles, except they're squares. They've got a scallop and a smooth edge. And you can see all the, the wonderful sizes that you get. So those are the ones I used to make the Christmas card today. And, um, I used uh, a few little things along the way on the others, but uh, let me show you those and uh, maybe you'll get some ideas today. This card is done in mint macaron and the paper that I used is from the Whimsy and Wonder pack. And if you remember, there's a sheet in there that's got all these beautiful little packages on a sheet of paper and I cut those apart I saw a lady, uh, Sam, I guess you pronounce her name, Calcott, out of the UK, uh, do an edge like this, and I liked it. So, uh, what you do is you just, you know, glue these on, adhere them on with some, um, uh, a tape runner or what have you, and then I fussy cut along the edge, as you can see. And then, when you close it, you see the underneath, um, you don't see any of the sentiment, but you see this underneath border, which, which was the way I did it. And, um, I used some of the, uh, paper that, that I had left over from Celebration, um, some of the sparkle paper. I used, um, some of the, um, champagne, rhinestones, or gems, whatever you want to call them. And I also used the label from the uh, seasonal label dies to cut this one out. I also used the same one to cut this out, but I had a, stri I had like a maybe an inch, I guess it looks like it's about an inch wide, um, strip that I stamped the Merry Christmas on, and then I just cut the ends with that die. So it fit right on top of it, made a nice border, and um, you know, there you go. So I just added the rhinestones because I thought that with this, um, not having any design in it on this side that it added a little bit extra with all the sparkle and everything. So, hope you like that one. This one is done um, with, with what is called the silhouette technique. And all that is, is that you sponge lightly, like uh, cut you out a big circle, maybe use one of the circle layering dies or what have you and take your blending brushes. And um, I started with the Highland Heather and went real easy all the way around. 
And then I went back with some Knight of Navy and darkened up the edges a little bit. Then I came back and stamped the trees. These trees came from the Peaceful Deer set and uh, did some second and third generation stamping. And I also went back later and added some Wink of Stella to it that added some shine to this one. And um, the little base to the snow globe is made from a scrap piece of uh, some of that specialty um, silver paper in the um, to, in the mini catalog, the one that we're um, ordering from now. And this is a little piece of the of the red velvet. So um, I just took what I had, and uh, I kind of like the way that one turned out. Uh, it's got some shine, and, and yet it's it's pretty clean cut, too. So, uh, use some Knight of Navy on the inside. Now, these two are just similar but opposite. Um, this is another way that you can use your paper, and I'm going to hold both these up at the same time. Um, all in the world I did was I took one piece of the painted Christmas um, paper, and... I cut it three and three quarters by five, and I cut from corner to corner. And then I cut from corner to corner in the other direction, but I did use a little piece of post-it tape to hold the two pieces together. And then when I got finished, I did one of the green and made two cards out of it because you can alternate them like that and make two cards. And one looks more red, one looks more green, and... I put a little different center in this one than I did this one and put a little band on this one that this one doesn't have. So um, those cards, you know, I just took some of the same um, sheets of uh, paper or, uh, you know, the uh, printed paper and coordinated them and made two cards at one time. So I thought I'd show you how they would look different. And the inside's got the same thing on both of them. Uh, one done in red and one done in green. So I hope you'll get some ideas from that. But, you know, they look uh, uh, amazingly different. I honestly think I like this white tag a little bit better than the green because it just stands out better. But that might be, a, you know, a matter of uh, personal preference. Um, I will say that this is the uh, Evening Evergreen and the Soft Succulent Colors. And this particular piece of paper came from the Tidings of Christmas, whereas the printed came from the painted Christmas. Okay, that was a lot. Okay, this little card, I got the idea of cutting strips of small pieces that I had left, and I just cut them kind of long and um, adhered them to a, piece, a solid piece of uh, cardstock. And I cut myself a little Christmas tree. I just did like we did in um, elementary school and folded a piece in half and, and cut it to where I got it to look like what I wanted. And then I used it as a pattern to cut this tree out. But um, I thought this made a bright and pretty uh, Christmas tree to go on the front of the card. Uh, this paper comes from the Whimsy and Wonder, this pale um, mint macaron design and then mint macaron around the outside. So I actually did two of these at the same time, just like I did the other one. Uh, it looks, you know, very much the same as this one, so I didn't bring it out, but um, that's what I did to the inside with the mint macaron, same sentiment. And um, I didn't put a sentiment on the outside of this because I just thought that tree said Merry Christmas. So you could add a sentiment if you wanted to or do something different. This paper is from the Painted Christmas as well and soft succulent and a piece of the tiding uh, of Christmas, that striped underneath. This is soft succulent. I popped out a evening evergreen uh, tree with the tree punch that I've had, you know, for a couple of years and added, you know, something there. And I was thinking this morning, you know, you could add some uh, gems to this one if you wanted to, or, you know, you could do some different touches. But um, 
this, you know, you don't always have to have a world of supplies if you've got some leftover paper and cardstock. A little ink, it's amazing what you can do with what you have. This is another one that I made using what I had. This is the a little strip of that sparkle to add a little sparkle um, to the um, front of the card. You might want to, if you don't have any of that, you can certainly use foil instead. That would work fine, too. This is um, the Just Jade color, I believe. And it looks so pretty with this uh, Tidings of Christmas piece of paper that I just alternated it and put them on the very vanilla cardstock. Uh, this is a label from that same seasonal uh, labels die set. And on this one, I put wishing you from another stamp set, Merry Christmas. So, you know, use, use things that you've had um, in the past. You know, they don't last just six months and then they're gone. Uh, you, you know, you can, you can keep using them. I'm, that's what I'm going to do because, um, you know, you want to get a lot of use out of your things. And um, once you purchase them, the more you purchase the more options you actually have about matching and, uh, you know, using things that you've got to be creative. But uh, these are simple cards. Uh, I still think they're right pretty cards. I'm not uh, ashamed to send any of those, and I don't think anyone else would be either. So uh, use what you've got. Use some pieces of paper just like I did this one. And we're going to put it together. It's easy enough. Um, we start out with the card base, as always. Five and a half by eight and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. Already done the inside, which is, you know, stamping the inside sentiment. And the real red uh, border there. So, it's not very much to this one. I have one more sheet of uh, real red, which is four inches by five and a quarter, same as the one on the inside of the card. So you, you need two of these, and you need two pieces of the white, basic white, with uh, cut to three and three quarters by five. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue these two together first here in a second, but I also cut out, this is where my little squares came in, and if you do not have the squares, uh, the layering squares, you can actually cut yourself out some squares and just use something as a border, and it doesn't have to be scalloped. It can be a, it can be a smooth border. So um, I cut three of these, and I cut two of the um, pieces from the painted Christmas and see what little pieces these are. I'll um, leave the measurements of which die I used on my website. And then I cut one more um, little square and this one I put Merry Christmas on and it is actually smaller than the um, two um, printed, the, the printed paper. That happened by accident, but I liked it, so I left it. You could certainly cut them all the same size. It doesn't make any difference. All right, let's get at it here. I didn't mention the real red um, rhinestones and a little piece of baker's twine, but there again, you can use what you've got. Oh, okay. I lost my train of thought there for a second. I thought I was supposed to have something printed on this one, but I'm not. Okay. I'm going to make this, this panel first. And I really like for that to slip over just a little bit. Doesn't really want to. 
but maybe if I work with it a little bit, it'll slide over for me. All right. Press that down. And then I'm going to glue these pieces together. I could have had this done, but I thought we would just do it together today. But this helps you use up a lot of the little pieces that, you know, you don't quite know what to do with, but hey, if you can make an extra Christmas card and make it look pretty, then I think that's the thing to do. Okay, there's one. You don't need a lot of glue on the back, just a little bit. All right. These are real, be quite easy to center because I've just barely got a border of red around them. And if you, like I said, if you want, you can use a bigger die if you want to and make your border bigger. It's just up to you. And like I said, this one with the Merry Christmas on it is a little bit smaller. I did find that when I stamped this, Merry Christmas, I, scrapped, I stamped it onto some small pieces um, of the white that, you know, like I said, was scraps or, you know, leftovers or what have you. But it's a good idea to, you know, you'll have to find you a stamp if you don't have one like this that will fit in a small area like this. And the other thing is if you stamp it first and then turn your die, lay your die over it the way that you think it's going to look nice and kind of secure it with a piece of tape or something, then... Um, you can cut it out and it will be in the correct position when you get ready to put it on your card. Um, I'm going to reach back here. As I was thinking about this, I did not get out my uh, dimensionals. And I'm going to need them here in a second. So, pardon me. My memory's had a lapse again, I guess. Let's put this on the card first, the, the panel here. And then we'll add the decorations to the front. We don't always do it this way, but I think this time it, it actually works better. I guess this isn't really smart strategy uh, to encourage you to purchase things, but, uh, you know, I... I think it's important to take care of the customer. I really do. I, uh, it's not all about selling product. It's about, you know, making it work for you. All right, this is the way we're going to um, position these. Uh, I saw uh, the lady that, that somebody did this. I, I don't know if it was Sam Calcott or not, but... Um, her card was much bigger. So you just have to use the dies um, that will fit on the front of your card is what I'm saying. So you want to sort of position the top, the, the two. And the reason I put this on first is I thought that it may, I may let it lap over into the um, margin some around the, the red. So um, I'm going to start with the one at the top. Spacing on this one, I guess, is probably the most important thing to make it look nice. So, I'm going to hold it up just a little bit. And you want from side to side, of course. And you want this to be vertical. You don't want it sitting like that. Okay. 
Then we're going to do the second one that has a, a design on it. And she did not do hers this way. She um, used um, dimensionals, but the way I want mine to see it, I don't think that lapping it just a tiny little bit is that much of a problem. I think it's I think it'll work just fine. So when you when when you get the second two when you put the second one on, make sure that it lines up with the, the, the top one as very best you can. Okay, I think that's good. And press it down. Now if this was gonna show you might not want to glue right on top, but this little thing is not gonna show. So that's the reason I say that I, I like doing it this way better. We're gonna use dimensionals now, because if you tried to glue to that, it, it wouldn't be level and it wouldn't look very nice. So we're gonna take this Merry Christmas, and I'll take my pick -a tool here and my dimensionals, and put a few on the back. This is, this is so nice to have dimensionals that will, um, you know, they help in evening out your project as well as giving dimension to your project. Uh, I think that's probably enough. Sometimes I tend to put too many on. Like I said, this is a real easy little card and uh, I just hope it'll give you some ideas. All right, I'm gonna hold it up and I'm gonna center this and I need to center it not only from top to bottom but from side to side as well. And when you get it to where you feel like that you're about where you need to be and be careful not to press it down too much to start with because if you press it down, it's gonna stay. All right. I think that looks nice. And you have this diamond shape, um, you know, layering. Now then, I am going to take a glue dot and I tied a little bow. I had some red and white um, baker's twine. If you've got some red, that's fine. Uh, I'm not sure that white would look great on white but if you don't have any, just put an extra gem or two here and there, and it'll look nice that way too. I'm gonna put this little glue dot here at the bottom. But this might, whoops, it fell out on me. It came undone, I didn't realize it. Okay. This card is a real clean looking card. And it's bright and cheery. Nothing says Christmas like red and green. Okay. So I'm going to leave that like that. Might puff up my little bow a little bit there. And I just put three of these little red rhinestones. And they come in handy for so many things. If you don't have any, they're great to have in your stash. Because... Um, I'm gonna put this one down here a little further, maybe, and and uh, you don't you don't just have to use them for Christmas. I mean, you can use them for all kinds of things. Valentine's Day's coming right after the first of the year. Red's great for that too, so you might want to pick up a pack of these. All right, now is that not an easy card? And it's using a lot of product you have, and this one, as you can see. I spread this one out more than I spread that one out. I think they look equally nice. Uh, did not realize I was doing that, but you know, that's the beauty of a handmade product. They are going to be uh, slightly different than the one before, so. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I will have it on my website shortly. And, uh, well, by the time you get this, I mean, it'll be up or you wouldn't get it. That's, that's silly, I guess. But um, I, I've got um, 
a link on my website too if you're interested in some of the Christmas tags. They're available in a kit form now if you're just the kind of person that uh, doesn't have a world of time and likes to have everything, you know, just kind of prefixed for you. There's a kit that can make you can use to make some pretty tags and things for your Christmas gifts this year. And um, the clearance rack was updated a week or a little more ago. There's some items still on that. And if you should need something from the mini catalog or the big catalog, I would appreciate your business. Um, just remember to use my host code. And um, if you would, please push subscribe. And uh, if you know someone that enjoys crafting, please share the video with them. I'd appreciate it so much. And in the meantime, till I'm back again, hope all goes well with you and I'll see you again real soon. Thank you.